Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, for today's lesson, lesson 2.2.6, multiplying mixed numbers, we're going to take what we've learned the last few lessons about multiplying fractions together, and we're going to uh, add a little bit more complexity to it by including mixed numbers in the process. Now, a mixed number is a rational number with a value greater than 1. It's written with a whole number part and a simplified fraction part, and it's written this way instead of being written as an improper fraction. So if we take a look at an example of an improper fraction, like 7 over 3, that can stay as an improper fraction. You know, this 7 thirds tells you how many thirds you've got, but sometimes we might want to write it as a mixed number. So uh, 2 and 1 third is equivalent to 7 thirds, and you may recall the process for going, uh, for converting from an improper fraction to mixed number is the same as doing the division process with decimals, but in this case, we're not uh, stuck with the decimal system. We can use any denominator that we want. So we're dividing by three. So how many uh, threes fit into seven? Two of them. And two times three is six. And then you've got uh, one left over. So we're going to make that one third. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, uh, I'll just draw. I don't need to um, make the circles perfect. But this is a good illustration of what we're doing when we're talking about mixed numbers. So there's uh, two circles, right? One full circle, another full circle. If we broke those up into three equal parts, then we've got a total of six thirds there, correct? And if I were to just draw one more section here, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thirds. Okay, so there's the seven thirds. But when I arrange those seven thirds to make as many holes as I possibly can, I end up making two complete whole numbers, or two complete holes, or one plus one is two, and then you still got that third that doesn't get to match up with any other thirds because we're all out of them. So we're just going to leave that as the one-third part, but that is in simplest form, right? One-third, and then the two part here. So that's, in essence, what's going on when we're dealing with mixed numbers. Just a little bit of a refresher there. Okay, so mathematics is a powerful tool for solving many problems you may encounter in the real world. But real-world problems worth solving often involve messy numbers in many steps. Fortunately... The operations, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division can be applied to all different kinds of numbers you might encounter. Today you will review multiplication with simple fractions, then you will extend what you know to working with fractions greater than one, mixed numbers, and I'm not quite sure if we're going to get to decimals today. Maybe we'll get to decimals. As you work with your team, uh, or as you're working at home on this, keep the following question in mind. Would, you, would using a different form of this number make the problem easier? Huh. We'll have to think about that a little bit. All right. So uh, here's a great conversation happening between them. This is where working in groups can help everybody learn because you get to hear ideas from other people. While working in class, Stephanie had to do the problem 3 over 5 times 6 over 7, 3 fifths times 6 sevenths. She started to draw rectangles to solve the problem, like we did in yesterday's lesson or the previous lesson, whenever that was. Uh, Stephanie looked over at Audrey's work and saw that Audrey was way ahead of her. How did you get so far ahead of me? Why aren't you drawing rectangles for all of these problems? Stephanie asked. I remembered a shortcut, Audrey said. Didn't you notice that when we drew the rectangles, we got the same thing as if we had just multiplied the numerators together and then multiplied the denominators? I just did 3 times 6 is equal to 18, and then 5 times 7 is 35, and I got the answer 18 over 35. It was a lot faster. When I saw these problems, I decided I wasn't going to draw the rectangles and all those little pieces. And I'd say, hey, Aubrey, good thinking. You know, that's, that's a problem solver. In mathematics, I, I think one of the number one goals is to try and figure out the easiest way to do our work, right? Work smarter, not harder. And don't say that to me when I ask you to show your work, though. Uh, so... Let's check Audrey's method to see if she is correct. So remember, this is the, the problem. It was, uh, what was the problem again? Uh, 3 over what? 3 over 5. Okay. 
So she said three over five times six over seven, and she thought the answer was supposed to be 18 over 35. So here is a model for that. Okay, oh, I've got it written down there. I don't need it. Okay, so uh, I've drawn the rectangle where, what do we need? Five equal parts going in this direction, right? One, two, three, four, five, and seven equal parts going in this direction make a total of 35 total squares. Okay, so this hole is now 35 out of 35 instead of just one. Okay, so three fifths have been shaded in and six sevenths have been shaded in. And sometimes actually, sometimes I don't even bother shading these because we're only focusing on the red part, the three fifths that have been shaded in but you can do it either way. But yeah, so you think red is the three-fifths, and then of those three-fifths, we're going to shade in six-sevenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and leave that one unshaded uh, by the blue. Now notice how those are all a nice purple color. I did that on purpose, because red and blue make purple. And what do we have? One, two, three, by one, two, three, four, five, six, a total of 18 of those. And so, yeah, according to the model, Three fifths times six sevenths is equal to eighteen thirty-five. So I think Aubrey is or Audrey is onto something. What information does multiplying five times seven give you? That gives you the total number of equal parts in the whole. And what information does the three and the times the six give you? That's the number that have been double shaded. Because remember, that's what we're looking for for this model is whatever part was double shaded, that represents the numerator of our answer, okay? So, let's start to transition away from using the visual imagery and solve it symbolically, which is so much faster and so much easier. What I would like for you to do now is copy down each one of these problems. Now, if you want to use the rectangle, you can. I'll be happy to, uh, maybe I'll work on one of these problems. I don't really want to do them all. I certainly don't want to do the problems that have 14 or, or 13 or 11. Um, I actually don't want to do any of them, to be honest with you. Let's just multiply. Let's just do it the easy way, okay? Copy these down. Uh, simplify your answers, if possible, if necessary. And then uh, unpause when you're ready to see what the answers are. Okay. Let's see what we got. Uh, 7 over 8 times 5 over 6. So 7 times 5 is 35. 8 times 6 is 48. I don't believe that can be simplified at all. And the reason why I'm saying that is this. Because I love Paul uh, using prime factors to simplify fractions. And I know on the top, 7 and 5 are already prime. So I can't expand those out anymore times 6 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So there are no common factors in the numerator or denominator. So we're not going to be able to simplify anything. So that's the final answer right there. Same thing applies here. 13 and 5 are both prime numbers, and 2 and 4 are not factors of those prime numbers, so we're not going to simplify this fraction either. That answer is 8 over 65. Same thing here, 6 over 7 times 6 over 7. There will be no common factors, so our final answer is 36 over 49. This is the first situation here where we could simplify the fraction beforehand. For instance, I know that 4 and 8 are 4 in common. So if I divide this by 4 and call it a 1, and divide that by 4 and call it a 2, then I'm going to get my simplified version of this fraction. It's going to be 3 over 14, right? 1 times 3 is 3, and 7 times 2 is 14. Had I not done it that way, I could have just multiplied straight across and then looked for common factors here, and it turns out 12 and 56 have 4 in common. So you divide the top and the bottom by 4 to get the same answer. I think it's easier to think ahead of what will be canceled out and then multiply rather than doing it at the end. But... Everyone's got their own preferences. The same thing here. 6 uh, times 1 over 11 times 2 could be 6 over 22, but I recognize they're both even numbers, so they're both divisible by 2. Now, that's not too hard to put there, but you could have also done it here. 
and said 3 times 1 is 3, and 11 times 1 is 11. And now for the last one. This has a lot going on. 8 and 14 have 2 in common. 9 and 3 have 3 in common. So if we expand that out, it looks like the total of 72 over 42, you can divide the top and the bottom by 6 and get 12 over 7. But had you uh, taken care and, and done this here, like where they divide the 2 out here, so that becomes a 4, and that becomes a 7. Divide the 3 out here, so that becomes a 1, that becomes a 3. Then you got 4 times 3 is 12, and 1 times 7 is 7. So you can do it like that. You can do it like this. Or sometimes you can just do it in your head like that one wasn't too much trouble to do. All right, so I'm hoping that you got uh, everything correct and you're ready to move on to the next phase. The next phase involves mixed numbers. Rana is making a small flower bed that is three and a half feet by one and a half feet. She needs to find the area so she can add the correct amount of fertilizer to the soil. On your paper, please draw this out. In fact, let me just remove these guys for a second. Just draw that, okay? This is a tool that you're gonna be using when you get into high school, when we're doing some high level factoring of, uh, of quadratic polynomials. You have no idea what that means, but trust me, you will use them at some point. So if you can practice this a little bit now while we're working with mixed numbers, and it's not going to be a shock to you when your high school teachers pull this out for some higher level algebra. So I highly recommend trying this a little bit, although just like with the rectangular, uh, like what we did earlier, uh, it's not necessarily the quickest or easiest way of doing it. But it's a good way of organizing and visualizing what we're doing when we multiply mixed numbers together. Okay. So go ahead and do that, and then it says write the area in each of the four parts of the drawing, then find the total, okay? So I don't think I ever wrote the total. So uh, actually, let me go back to him. So the first part is this is 3 times 1 is going to be 3, right? And then 1 half times 1 is 1 half, so we'll put that in here. And then the 3 times 1 half is going to be 3 halves, and the 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So those are all the individual areas. Now, if I were to add those together, here's the 3 right there, right? And if I have, add 1 half to 3 halves, that gives me 4 halves, which I know is equal to 2. So in essence, so far, I've highlighted 3, 3 and a half, and then uh, 4 and 5. So those all add up to 5. And then your one quarter at the end just makes our total sum be equal to five and one quarter. Why did I just do that? I don't know. That's just why I'm trying to do that. All right. Write an equation that represents the sum of the four areas. So there you go. Three plus one half plus. You could change this to three plus two fourths plus six fourths plus one fourth and then combine the three plus the seven fourths and eventually get yourself to, or would that be uh, eight, nine fourths? Uh, yeah, it's probably nine fourths. Uh, to get the five in one fourth as well, if you didn't want to do that little mental thing that I did right there. So what multiplication problem would you use for this problem? And that's the multiplication problem. Three and a half by one and a half is the same as saying three and a half times one and one half is equal to five and one fourth. Okay, now I want to point out a very common mistake. This will probably show up as a stoplight problem, but this is really important to understand. If I take three and a half times one and one half, do you know what the most common wrong answer is? The most common mistake students make is treating this the same way you would an addition problem where and when you're adding these mixed numbers together, you would add the fraction part and the whole number part. And so you end up with one half times one half is one fourth and three times one is three. But it doesn't work that way. That's like me taking 17 times 21 and saying my answer is 27. That does not work because these are numbers in the ones place, but those are numbers in the tens place. You can't do that. You gotta multiply the one times the seven and the one times the 10, then the 20 times the seven and the 20 times the 10. 
it's a little bit more complicated than just going straight down. So it doesn't work with mixed numbers either. You would be shocked at the number of people who, on a test, rather than going through and doing the work, which is not a whole lot of work, but it's a little bit of work, um, would rather just get a wrong answer and just do it as quickly as possible than trying to go through the process. Please don't get stuck in that rut. It doesn't take that much time to do it the right way. The more you practice it, the easier it gets, okay? So there is the right approach to do this. All right, now let's try it again. Use the process shown in the previous problem and find the area of Rona's flower bed if the dimensions are one and a half feet by five and a third feet, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can uh, replicate what we did in the previous problem and then come back to check the answers. All right, so if we all agree that the problem is one and a half times five and one third, and that would require us to create this rectangular box where we have five and one third is literally five plus one third, and one and one half is literally one plus one half. We're going to multiply the different parts together, and it doesn't matter which ones we do first. You know, when we're multiplying, uh, what did I say, 17 times 21, we would always start with 1 times 7, right? But when you're doing it this way, you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You can just multiply them in any order. So 5 times 1 is 5, 1 third times 1 is 1 third, 5 times 1 half is 5 halves, and 1 third times 1 half is 1 sixth. And now you're going to find the sum of all of those numbers. So I changed all of them, all the fractions, so they have a common denominator. So one third becomes two over six. If five over two, you multiply that times three over three. Maybe I'll chop that in for a second there just so that you'll see it. This you would have to multiply times two over two. This you'd have to multiply times three over three. And this guy gets to stay as it is, one sixth. So you add straight across and you end up with five plus 18 over six. And since 18 over 6 is 3, then our final answer is going to be 8. So this flower bed is going to be 8 square feet. Although we're not worrying too much about the unit of measurement and, and all that. We're just focusing on the multiplication. All right. Janique was working in class. She had to do the problem 2 and a half times 3 and a fourth. She did not want to draw rectangles either, just like Audrey. She's like, I, well, I go through all that work. There's got to be a better way. She thinks she's figured it out. I know how to change mixed numbers into fractions. That will make it easier, much easier, she boasted. So this is the work that she did. She decided to take 2 and 1 half times 3 and 1 fourth and rewrite them as improper fractions. Now, let me go ahead and take this right here. And let me show you what it would look like and why each one of them gets changed to their improper fractions, uh, 5 and a half and 13 over 14. 2 and 1 half looks like this. And if I cut them all into halves, how many total halves do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 halves. So when we convert from a mixed number to an improper fraction, you multiply your denominator, which is you know, what we're counting, right? We're counting halves here. And you multiply it times the whole number. So how many total? There's two there, there's two there. There's a total of four halves plus the one extra makes five halves. And now for three and one fourth, one, two, three, and one fourth, you got three holes, but there's four there. That's a total of eight. There's a total of 12 fourths. Three times four is 12, plus that additional 13 fourths. So that process of going back and forth between a mixed number and an improper fraction or improper fraction and a mixed number, we should have that memorized by now. If not, it's something to work with, something to work on, I should say, uh, so that we become masters of that. So now we can just go straight across. 5 times 13 is 65, and 2 times 4 is 8, and there are no common factors in there, so that can't be simplified anymore. And now you do the division. What is 65 divided by 8? Well, 8 goes into 65 8 times, which makes it 64. And now you got one left over, right? Because we took up 64, but we still have we have 65, so we have that one left over, and that's 8 and 1 8. Okay? So 
I would like for you to go through that process, but let's go through it together with A, and then you could do B and C. Now, if you want to use the uh, rectangle, you could, but I think your shortcut is so much better. Uh, let's start with this one right here. Three and one half is the same as seven over two, seven halves. One and one half is the same as three over two, three halves. So when you multiply them together, you get 21 over four. And how many fours fit into 21? Five of them with a remainder of one. So five and one fourth ends up being the answer. Okay? You go ahead and do uh, part B and C and see if you get the same answer as me. All right, let's see how you did with B. With problem B, one and one third can be written as four thirds. Two and one half can be written as five halves. So when you multiply five times four, you get 20. Three times two is six. Three and two sixths, right? Because eight, six goes into 23 times. That's 18 with two left over. Two sixths can be simplified to one third. So our answer here is three and one third. And this last one, one and one third, times three and one third. Well, one and one third, as we saw here, was four thirds. And three and one third is nine ten thirds. Four times 10 is 40. Three times three is nine. And how many nines can you fit into 40? Four of them, that's 36. And then you count up to 40. So that means you got left over four. So four and four ninths ends up being the answer. Okay, so practice 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 you're going to get a lot of practice this year and in eighth grade working with fractions and multiplying whole numbers mixed numbers fractions positives and negatives and i'm going to tell you deloro absolutely or whatever high school you go to they need you to have this mastered this is just something that if you don't know how to do this basic kind of math when you get to high school you're you're not going to be able to learn the higher skills the higher concepts in the high school math, and you're gonna to have to keep doing this over and over again before you can even access that, okay? So practice it every chance you get, copy the problems, show your work. It's okay to make mistakes in your homework because you can correct your homework, okay? You wanna make sure that you know how to do this, however, by the time we take our chapter tests, okay? So good luck with everything and uh, keep up the good work. Take care, bye. Hey, feeling good.